From St. Paul's Baptist Church, here's the scoop. Can you imagine a world where everyone is perfect? We can't either. Life gets messy, feelings get hurt, relationships change, conversations are tough. There's no way around it. So let's learn how to get better at being imperfect together. Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, as he leads us on this journey of discovery, starting February 6th. There's good news for our friendships, marriages, teams, and families this year. No matter what stage or shape your relationships are in, Jesus shows us how to deepen bonds and better love the people around us. Join us for the Bridge Bible Study on Thursdays at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. on our mobile app, My SPBC app, and myspbc.tv. We are planning to reopen in-person Sunday school for children and students sometime in the new year. If you are the parent or guardian of a child in our Imagination Life Stage, infant to 10 years of age, and our SMB Life Stage, middle school, high school, and college students, please update your CCB profile and complete a profile update form for your child. Go to myspbc.ccbchurch.com and click on Forms. Scroll until you see the profile forms and complete only the forms that you need. We want to make sure you don't miss any upcoming announcements in the new year. Join us every Wednesday at 714 for prayer together and help us spread the word by sharing the phone number 855-518-2394. Tap pound one to subscribe. If my people who are called by my nature humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Second Chronicles 714. Become who God created you to be. You can face life with the kind of love and support God had in mind for you. Now is the perfect time to find a small group you love that fits your schedule and season in life. Small groups are a place to belong and grow. Find a group you love today by visiting myspbc.info slash find a group. Since 2022, our Script program has contributed more than $177,000 toward our emergency assistance program through our community foundation as a result of your participation. To join, download the Raise Right app by scanning the QR code on the bottom right of your screen. Sign up and start purchasing Script cards from your favorite retailers. There are no fees, but every time you purchase a Script card, Retailers contribute to our emergency assistance program to help people in need. Download the Raise Right app today. To purchase cards directly, call 804-463-2466. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop.
Good morning, beloved. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I woke up this morning thinking about an old hymn written by William C. Martin entitled, My Heavenly Father Watches Over Me. I trust in God. I know he cares for me on mountain bleak or on the stormy sea. The billows roll. He keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches over me. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Let us pray. Wise God, our Father, we thank you uh, for this day. We thank you for waking up, up this morning and starting us on our way to come into the house of worship, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask, O oh God, that your blessing would fall fresh upon our pastor and his family. Uh, give him uh, the strength that he needs and imbue him uh, with uh, uh, the word that we need to hear from on high this morning. Uh, we thank you, Father God, uh, for all the many, many blessings that continue to fall fresh on us each and every day. And we say right now, have your way with us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Well, welcome, St. Paul's Everywhere. I'm Reverend Roscoe Jones, and I serve as the Life Stage Pastor of the Refiners. That's everyone who is 70 years old and above. My prayer for you today is that God would exceed your expectations, for God is able to exceedingly and abundantly and above all you could ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that works in us. We welcome you to St. Paul's Everywhere. We are touching the world with love, communicating the positive power of Jesus Christ to our generation. Out of all the places and pages where you could have paused your cursor today, you stop here and we're glad to have you. There are a number of ways you can engage with us right now. If you're brand new, you can text the word new to 804-643-4769. That's 804-643-4769. Text the word new and let us welcome you. If you're on social media, please greet the person before you and behind you in the chat space with a great big happy Sunday. Uh, if you're at home watching on television, computer, or iPad, greet the people in your room. Or if you're physically alone, call somebody and invite them to join you online for worship. If you like something, hit the like button. If you think of someone you want to bless, hit the share button. If the message or the music speaks to you, feel free to post emojis or comment in the chat and use your life stage color. My main purpose is this, beloved. We want to worship with you, not for you. So let's connect, let's get involved, and let's do it right now. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Bread of life sent down from glory Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter, you are the living word, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. By the living word, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, sits down from the Lord. Many things you are, many things you are on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, awesome ruler, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer. God with us, the living truth. God with us, oh. the living truth. And what a friend we have in you. You are the living you are the living. Come on, say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. That's what we call you. That's what we call you. You were made to born, say, oh, 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 you blind to say, you are the living one, say, Jesus, Jesus, say, that's what we call you. Come on. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just begin to bless God right where you are. Come on, open up your mouth and bless him. Come on, he is the living word. He is the living word. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, say, Jesus, Jesus, say, that's what we call you. What we call what we Come on, there's no name greater. Jesus, Jesus, oh. Come on, see you are. Come on, we call him, we call him heal. Provide my sustain. God, you're my everything. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. What a joy, honor, and privilege it is to have the opportunity to worship with you today. And I'm glad to announce there is a word from the Lord. So travel with me now. If you have your scriptures, whether hardback or digital, Travel with me now to the textual territory that is 1 Samuel chapter 19. And I'd like to read in your hearing verses 11 through 16 out of the message translation of the Bible. Listen for a word from God. Saul sent men to David's house to stake it out and then first thing in the morning to kill him. But McCall, David's wife told him what was going on. Quickly now, make your escape tonight. If not, you'll be dead by morning. She let him out of a window and he made his escape. Then McCall took a dummy god and put it on in the bed, placed a wig of goat's hair on its head and threw a quilt over it. When Saul's men arrived to get David, she said, He's sick in bed. Saul sent his men back, ordering them, bring him bed and all so I can kill him. When the men entered the room, all they found in the bed was the dummy god with its goat hair wig. The word of God for the people of God, all praise be to God. And I want to draw your attention specifically to the verse that says, but McCall, David's wife, told him what was going on. Quickly now, make your escape tonight. If not, you'll be dead by morning. And I want to tag this text with the title, Die Another Day. Could I get 63 of you to type that in the chat space for somebody? Die Another Day. 
Of course, Die Another Day is the 2002 spy film in the James Bond franchise. In fact, it's the 20th film in that franchise. For the uninformed and uninitiated, the plot follows James Bond as he attempts to locate a mole in British intelligence who betrayed him and a British billionaire who is later revealed to be connected to a North Korean operative that he seemingly killed. In the film, M-16 agent James Bond infiltrates a North Korean military base where Colonel Tan Sun Moon is illegally trading weapons for African conflict diamonds. After Moon's right-hand man, Zhao, is contacted by an unknown source who reveals James Bond's true identity, Moon attempts to kill Bond and a hovercraft, hovercraft chase ensues, ending with Colonel Moon accidentally driving his craft off a cliff. Of course, James Bond survives in the first of several close calls, any of which could have taken his life. But over and over and over again, despite danger and despots, he lives to die another day. And that's the testimony of thousands of people sharing this moment right now, because like Bond, you have been in situations and circumstances that could have taken you under and maybe even taken you out, but by the grace of Almighty God, you have lived to die another day. God has protected you, as my saintly grandmother would pray, from danger seen and unseen, amid problems, pains, people, and pressures that swirled around us and could have destroyed us. The Lord has protected us. Is there anybody listening who wants to throw up an early praise because you know God has protected you from danger seen and unseen? What does that phrase mean? Dangers seen and unseen. It makes you wonder if there are dangers in life that lurk around us and can leap upon us without announcing their arrival. Are you listening to me? We know and recognize ordinary visible dangers, but what about the dangers we do not know and cannot see? Wait, because if you live a day over 21, I want to suggest that you will discover the grave truth and intense meaning of this phrase, danger seen and unseen. Because while there are dangers that are concrete, there are other dangers that are covert. There are dangers where a different kind of radar is required to discern their presence. Human senses and resources alone are impoverished in their provision of protection against dangers unseen. And while I'm here, can I remind you of what you already know? Here it is. All of us need protection. Somebody say amen. And here's the first teaching point of this proclamation following that affirmation. All of us need protection. Here's the shout. God protects us amid the unseen. For in this very moment, might I suggest to you there are unseen dangers all around us. That's why we cannot gather in person in the sanctuary without appropriate protocols because there's biological and respiratory danger, invisible to the eye and yet dangerous to every lung within its reach. There are political dangers from which we need protection. The COVID-19 crisis did not break America. It revealed what was already broken, a corrupt political class, a sclerotic bureaucracy, a heartless economy, lies about voter fraud and efforts at voter restriction. There are financial dangers, inflation fears, stock market jitters, 
interest rate worries, worries about the persistence of the pandemic, supply chain interruption, skyrocketing student loan debt, rents people can't afford. And what about the dangers unseen of aging that creep around the corner? Now, for many of you listening, that doesn't mean anything because you now think, as I once thought when youthful vitality greeted me every morning, but keep on living and time will change some things despite your workout schedule, your diet, or your hair dye. One of my pastoral colleagues in a last week broke his foot unexpectedly and when I text him prayers, he texts me back, my auntie once told me it's nice to grow older but it's a little inconvenient. You don't hear me yet. People say that 50 is the new 40, 40 is the new 30, 30 is the new 20, and it sounds good, but it's just not true. 50 has some baggage with it that you don't tote at 40. 40 makes some changes in your anatomy that you don't have to consider at 30. Things that used to live upstairs move down to the first floor. Hair that used to be combed and brushed with ease now falls out just as easily like a house in the weather. Windows need recalking, floors need renailing, and roofs need repairing. Does anybody on this stream know what I'm talking about? Aging has its dangers. And so what a comfort. The entire narrative of 1 Samuel 19 is about the protection of God amid the unseen. God provides protection against dangers seen and unseen. Can I take you there? Back up to 1 Samuel 18 so that I can give you the background before I give you the breakdown. David had seen some dangers, but here he is not yet fully aware of the capricious nature of his new employer who would spawn and sponsor innumerable unseen dangers that would affect his life. David became famous in Israel with his defeat of Goliath and carrying the head of the giant was routinely escorted by the general Abner to the tent of the king for appropriate recognition. Crowds of civilians lined the roadside shouting as David passed. Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. Let your imagination stream this image. Envision David's walk as he strolled holding the head of Israel's arch nemesis in his hand. He had delivered Israel from certain defeat. He had more swagger than Kendrick Lamar, Mary J. Blige, Dr. Dre, and Snoop Dogg getting ready for the Super Bowl halftime show. Saul is older now and painfully aware of the populist tendencies of of his people, and yet more pointedly, he senses the Spirit of God has departed from him and now appears to be resting on someone else that at this point he didn't really know. Saul is happy for David's victory, but he knows too much about the unseen hand of God to think that David accomplished this feat on his own. Experience reminded him that someone greater was behind David's victory and as he begins to put the pieces together to this puzzle that God may be the source of his strength, that reality did for him what it does for many people both then and now. It evoked a deep sense of personal insecurity. He asked David to come and join his household, move into to the palace and marry one of his daughters. And you're familiar with this line of thinking. It goes like this. Keep your friends close. Go on and finish that. But keep your enemies closer. Saul wants to assimilate David into his story of success. David initially balks at the invitation because he understands he's a commoner, but his victory evokes 
elevation in his access, residence, and company, but it also shrouds him with hateration because of Saul's insecurity and arrogance. David won the battle but couldn't quite win the heart of the king who sat on the throne. And this is what jealousy looks like, my friends. I don't like you and I can't say why. I don't like you and I really don't know why. We aren't surprised at the erratic and perhaps bipolar nature of Saul because after all, he's under the gun. He's under pressure. He knows that his previous disobedience to God God has numbered his days, and David is a vital reminder of what innocent, trusting faith in God looks like walking around on two legs. And can I help you here? Because jealousy comes in all ages and stages of life. I need 40 of you to just type I-K-T-R. I know that's right. From the White House to the crack house, jealousy will lift its green head anywhere. Jealous because I used to be, but now she is. Jealous because I did have, but now he has. Jealous because they used to love me, but now they're loving somebody else. Jealous because I used to be celebrated and now I'm just tolerated. Give me a minute to talk to your neighbor. I know you don't need it. And yet hear me when I say to you that no matter how gifted you are, how high God lifts you or how much God gives you, you too are a candidate for insecurity. All of us, did you hear what I said? All of us have a little bit of Saul buried in our bosom because insecurity threatens the great and the gifted. And sometimes those who are fortunate, talented, gifted, and blessed beyond measure end up addicted to the recognition that others provide. And if they're not getting it, they don't want anybody else to have it. So here's my question for you, not your neighbor, but for you. Can you stand to be around major people without feeling minor yourself? Boom, that's a bombshell. Do big people make you feel small? There's another one. That's how Saul felt. Jealous insecurity made Saul more afraid of David than he had been of Goliath. And that is huge. He invites David to join his household. And that brought unexpected repercussions. Because watch this. Whereas Saul was put off by David, his son Jonathan took to David. In fact, the phrase scripture deploys is that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. Jealousy was driving Saul out of his mind so maniacally. He tried on two different occasions to pin David to the wall with a spear. David eluded him. And there's a whole lesson there, which I really don't have time to explore, about learning how in life to keep your head on a swivel, knowing when to avoid, when to evade, when to elude, when to ignore. But that's another sermon. But just suffice it to say, if you're going to be successful, in this life, you've got to develop the skill to be flexible, adaptable, and elastic. Jonathan is knit to David in friendship, but to make matters worse, Saul's daughter, McCall, is romantically attracted to David, and who could blame her? Lean in a little bit. David's star is not just rising, it's meteoric. He is the most popular guy in the entire country. He's brave, he's strong, he's handsome, he's courageous, and wait for it, he's a musician. Come on, somebody. I don't know what it is about being able to sing or play skillfully an instrument, but in my lifetime, I've seen a whole lot of fine, love a whole lot of I because they can sing or they can play. I ain't gonna get no help today. David has all the boxes verified, all the categories checked. He's handsome, popular, brave, courageous, strong, and he's a musician. Saul, driven by insecurity, tries to use his daughter's affection to his advantage as a trap for David. And you do know that attention, affection, and attraction can be used as a trap. 
I'm preaching to somebody now who was lured into a dangerous, destructive relationship, chasing the bait of attention, affection, and attraction. Saul tries to nail David to the wall, but over and over again, his head on the swivel, David escapes. And there might be a connection here between that phrase and the 23rd Psalm, he anoints my head with oil, and he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Because the implication there, if I can borrow that metaphor, is that the oil with which God had anointed him made him slippery, evasive, and elusive. You missed that. But that's a picture of the protective custody of Almighty God. God has so configured us in grace that God can permit your enemies to gaze on you and yet not be able to grasp have hold of you. They can holler at you, but they won't be able to harm you. Because here's the point again, God protects us amid the unseen. But secondly, can I go a little further? God protects us when we are unaware. That's how the chapter opens. This is a military convocation. Saul has invited his cabinet, his secretary of defense and generals are all assembled around the table. He gives to his top security advisors a confidential dossier. The title on it was Operation Destroy David. It's verse 1, chapter 19. Saul ordered his son Jonathan and all his servants to kill David. But Saul's son Jonathan liked David very much, so he told him, my father Saul intends to kill you, so be on your guard in the morning and hide in a secret place and stay there and I'll go out and stand beside my father in the field and I will talk to him him about you and I'll see what he says and whatever he says I'll tell you. Do you see this? David is completely oblivious. He is completely unaware. David is a military leader, but he's not invited to the military meeting. Remember that, my friends, because typically when you're not invited to the meeting, it's because you are on the agenda. Saul doesn't want him at the meeting because David is the subject and target of his agenda. It's referenced five times in this chapter. Saul intends to kill David, and yet neither time was he successful? Can I bless somebody today? God may not deliver you from the presence of danger, but God will protect you while danger is all around you. Have I got any witnesses here? That's why you don't need to feel safe in order to be safe. Sometimes it's only in the rearview mirror of your life that you discover just how safe God has kept you. That was David's testimony. He wrote about it in 2 Samuel 22, beginning at verse 17, when in the sunset of his life, David paused to put pen to papyrus. He wrote, he, meaning God, reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from a powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. The old translations say into a wealthy place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Can you hear it? David is saying, when I look back over my life, I can see how God's hand was guiding me. The Lord it was my support. And I don't know if you are, but I definitely am a witness. Somebody ought to type me too, that there have been times when God protected me and I didn't even know I was in danger. It wasn't until I came through it that I knew I was in it. Can I encourage you right now to take some time and look back over your own life 
Think about all the times that God protected you and you didn't even know you were in danger. Think about all the bad things that could have happened to you. The cars that you were in that spun out of control. The ships that you were riding that ran in the rough seas. The planes that you flew that battled with turbulent winds, tempestuous clouds, and terrible storms. The bad decisions that could have wrecked your life. The foolish choices that could have taken you out the tragedies that could have struck you, the diseases that tried to afflict you, the betrayals that could have destroyed you, the sickness that could have killed you, the meanness that almost discouraged you, the crises that could have wiped you out, the confusions that could have pulled your world apart. You've had some mean opposition on the highway of upward mobility, enemies that you didn't know, dangers you couldn't see, horrors you couldn't imagine, terrors you couldn't conceive, problems you couldn't foresee, disasters you couldn't anticipate, obstacles you couldn't discern, but God protected you when you were unaware. About 400 of you right now ought to be typing hallelujah and posting your upheld hands. But there's more to the text than that. Here it is, number three. God protects us not only amid the unseen. God protects us not only when we are unaware, but God protects us using the unlikely. Think about the people that God has used to watch over and protect your life. Think about the parents, pastors, peers, deacons, partners, church leaders, church members, community members, uncles, aunties, grandparents, cousins, and even total strangers that God has used along the way to protect you. I know I'm not the only person on this stream in whose life God has intervened using unlikely people. Maybe this will help you by way of the news. Some of you may remember a man by the name of James Brady. James Brady served as White House press secretary for then former and now former President Ronald Reagan. Tragically, during his administration, Reagan was the target of an assassin's bullet, but the bullet actually hit James Brady in the head. Reagan went down with one bullet in his lung and quickly recovered. They thought Brady was dead, but he bounced back. He survived and began a crusade against the indiscriminate distribution of handguns, and we ultimately got the Brady Bill signed. But what's striking, what I want you to get, is that the Brady Bill was signed because this unlikely man was willing to take a bullet that saved the president's life. God uses the unlikely. God uses an unlikely Jonathan to protect David. Jonathan is the heir apparent to the throne. Jonathan is next in line, and yet because he loves David and pursue, perceives what God is doing in David's life, he goes to work to protect the promise of God present in the life of David. I'm trying to argue that God will use unlikely people in unimaginable ways to protect you. This is part of the comprehensive coverage that God provides for those who trust in God. God not only has control over the good, but God has control over the bad. This next section is almost comical as you read it in the text because David, as I said, evades, he eludes, he slips away from Saul and he goes home to be with his wife. His wife warns him, I'm almost to my text, of imminent danger, saying, and I paraphrase, if you want to be alive tomorrow, you better leave tonight because my daddy is planning to take you out. David said, you ain't got to tell me but once. She lets David down in a basket out of the window, and stealthily he escapes. Then McCall does something striking and strange. 
grain. She takes a household idol, I-D-O-L, lays it in the bed and covers it with goat hair. She pretends that it's David. When Saul's agents arrive, she pretends he's in bed sick. God used the decoy to dismiss Saul's would-be assassin. Somebody missed a shout. They disperse back to the palace and report to Saul, who then summarily demands that they go back and retrieve David, even if they have to bring him on his sickbed. Of course, they get there only to discover they have been deceived. Saul raged in anger, asking his daughter, why would you betray your family? and let my enemy escape. But anybody who has lived a day over 25 knows the bedroom is always stronger than the boardroom. Y'all miss that. David escaped because God used that unlikely McCall to warn him and to help him. And it is odd to anybody other than me that McCall, the daughter of the king of Israel, Israel who worshiped Jehovah, Israel who worshiped Yahweh, had an idol in her house. But the point of the passage is that God can use people who are not fully committed to support God's cause and effect God's purpose. Who are you afraid of today? Who are you worried about today? What do you have anxiety about now? Hear me when I say everything and everybody is under the control of Almighty God. Even the demonic is subject to divinity, and that's why we can assert without fear of equivocation that God is greater than your enemies. God is stronger than your adversaries. God is mightier than your miseries. I know I'm right, because the text says that, quote, an evil spirit was sent upon Saul from the Lord. Not everything may come from God's hands, but everything has to come through God. God's hands. You got to get that. James Russell Law said it this way, truth forever on the scaffold wrong forever on the throne, yet that scaffold sways the future, and behind the dim unknown stands God in the shadows, keeping watch above his own. Joseph said it like this, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You don't have to be frustrated, aggravated, irritated, upset, and angry with your enemies. You're giving them way too much credit. What God intends to do for you is not what the enemy will send to you. The enemy may come against you, but God can use your enemies to raise up friends for you. I'm trying to argue today that God protects us amid the unseen. God protects us when we are unaware. God protects us through the unlikely, but also God protects us with the unaccomplished. Come here real quick. Chapter 19 has a strange ending because when Saul fails to trap David and his agents fail to apprehend David, Saul refuses to quit. They found David in Ramah. He's vulnerable and in the line of fire. He's at risk of exposure and execution. There's only one challenge, and here it is. David is God's chosen. Everybody shout chosen. David's life has meaning and purpose beyond David's lifetime. Who David is matters more to the future than what David does in his present moment. David is going to die one day, but because of the assignment on his life, he wasn't going to die that day because God wasn't done getting out of David what God had put in David. Boy, I hope you shouting about that because that's shouting material. David had some things he had to do before he died and he couldn't die until he had accomplished what God created him to accomplish. And here's the shout again, neither can you or I. Young David had to fight Goliath to pave the way for a young adult David to serve the king. A young adult David had to live on the run and learn to survive in the 
wilderness to lay the groundwork for a kingly David. He couldn't die that day because he had no children yet. And he had to have children because through his bloodline would come a host of kings from which the king of kings would one day be born into the human family. So protecting David at every phase of his pilgrimage was a priority for heaven. David would die one day, but not that day. And I don't know your story. I don't know the story of your life, but I can tell you this. If you have a pulse, you still have a purpose. If you're still breathing, it's because your work is yet to be accomplished. God still has something that God is working to accomplish in your life, and it extends beyond your lifetime. You don't ever know who God is raising up through your prayers, through your service, through your worship, and through your sacrifice. Because get this, if purpose is present, protection is inevitable. Boy, that's good right there. I got to say it again. If purpose is present, then protection is inevitable. God is so awesome that God will permit you to face danger, but at the same time, stop danger from killing you because his promise is not yet accomplished in your life. And somebody should be shouting right now if you know and believe that God's hand is on your life, that God is up to something magnificent in your life, then you can appreciate the fact that God has covered you and is watching over you and God will not let your enemies triumph over you until God gets out of you everything that God has put in you until you accomplish everything you're supposed to accomplish, until you achieve everything you're supposed to achieve, until you go everywhere you're supposed to go, until you do everything you're supposed to do. God protects us with the unaccomplished, and here's number five, God protects us with the unexpected. Let me show you, and I promise you I'm done, because Saul sent his agents to assassinate David after they fail, he goes after David himself. Look at verse 18. To escape Saul, David, as I said, travels to Ramah and finds refuge with Samuel the prophet. Saul sends not one, not two, but three sets of assassins to that location, all with the same result, that when they got within eyeshot of the prophet and his students, they all began to prophesy. They began to speak the word of God. These assassins began to speak the word of God out of their mouth. You missed that. Let me say it again, that when they all, he sent one, not one, not two, but three different sets of assassins, all with the same result, that when they got with an eye shot of the prophet and his students who were prophesying that they too all began to prophesy as well. Every agent that Saul sent to kill David ended up with God's word coming out of their mouth. God stops David's enemies by putting his word in their mouth. So then Saul said, if you want the job done, sometimes you got to do it yourself. Saul went to Ramah himself to seek David out. And when he got close to where David was, when he got within eye shot of the prophet and his students, what happens? He too begins to prophesy. I'm trying to tell you, my friends, that God is so sophisticated, that God can stop your enemies by putting his word in your enemy's mouth we got to go, but I just want somebody to know that God can protect you with the unexpected, with things people never imagined, prognosticated, or predicted. Who would have imagined that Moses could split the sea like a sidewalk with a shepherd's staff and that Israel could cross on dry land? Who would have imagined that Joshua could knock down the walls of Jericho by simply marching around them and on the seventh time giving a shout of victory. Who would have imagined that David could defeat Goliath with a slingshot and a rock? God can use the unexpected. Who would have imagined that unto us a child is born, that unto us 
a son is given that unto us the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty God prince of peace and everlasting father who would have imagined that God could be draped in Galilean cloth born in a barn wrapped in rags laid on uncovered hay worshipped by the shepherds sought by wise men hunted by Herod smuggled in Africa raised in Nazareth baptized in the Jordan stalked by Satan tempted in the wilderness and yet come out preaching who would have imagined that Jesus could heal the sick raise the dead liberate the captive, feed the hungry, and change the whole world. Who would have imagined that he'd be betrayed by a buddy, forsaken by a friend, deserted by his disciples, beat by the soldiers, mocked by the mob, and crucified on cavalry? And let me be clear, he died that day, but God, I said, but God, hey, but God uses the unexpected because Sunday morning, God raised him up with all power in his hands. Hallelujah. Is there anybody listening who can testify as you look back over your life that God has been protecting you amid dangers? God has been protecting you when you were unaware. God has been protecting you using the unlikely. God has been protecting you through the unaccomplished. And God has been protecting you through the unexpected. Won't he do it? We will all die one day. But that day is not today. Die another day. I need 63 people to type it in caps right now. Die another day. Tell the devil not today. Tell depression not today. Tell defeat not today. Tell discouragement not today. Tell despair not today. Tell disappointment not today. Today I'm going to live. I'm going to rise. I'm going to shine. I'm going to give God the glory glory. Today is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Yes! And be glad in it. Today, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Today, on this stream, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Die another day. Not today. Let us pray. Now, Almighty God, we acknowledge that our journeys here are not forever, that one day we will die, but we thank you that that day is not today because you are not finished with us yet. Thank you for your protective hand and your amazing grace. So now abide with us as you abided with David, as you were his company and his support and his consolation and comforter. Be so with us wherever we find ourselves today that we might live to your glory to achieve and accomplish all that you have created us to achieve and accomplish. And we thank you for this now in advance in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. And everybody everywhere said, I will live and not die today. That's my invitation to you, my brother and my sister. I want to pray for you. I want to ask you. I want to encourage you. I want to invite you to live to the glory of God. You will die one day. All of us will. But that day is not today. Today is the day to put your trust in Jesus Christ, to give God your heart, give us your hand, accept Christ as your savior, believe on him in your heart, confess it with your mouth, and do it today. 
I'd love to be your pastor. We would love to be your church. And all you've got to do is respond to our invitation. All the ways to respond are listed on the screen in the lower third of your screen. You can text the word JOIN, J-O-I-N, 804-643-4769, or you can visit our prayer room. We, that's right, we've got a whole team of counselors right now on standby, a team of prayer warriors, a team of loving brothers and sisters who are waiting to counsel with you, talk with you, introduce you to a relationship with the Lord, help you to grow stronger in your faith, connect you to the body of Christ, and they're ready to do it today. So live, don't die. Take that step right now. Today is the day. Let's do it together. Do you believe we are already through the first month of this year? Time waits for no one. And yet every day for the child of God, for the person of faith, every day is a day of thanksgiving for God has been good to us. Am I right about that? 
Don't leave me hanging. Has God been good to you? Come on, type it in the chat space. Yes, God has. God has been good to all of us. I love raising that question because it's in that spirit that we worship God through the giving of our tithe and our offering and our gifts of love. We bring it because we believe the promises of God. Malachi chapter three, verse 10, bring the whole tithe, 10%, into the storehouse, says the Lord, and test me in this. See if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. God promises to watch over, to protect your finances. As you give God first place, God will take care of your place. And it's in that spirit that we prepare to give now. All the ways to give are listed on the screen. You can give digitally. You can give by text using your digital device. You can go online to our website. You can write a check and drop it in the mail. However you give, accept our Thanksgiving in advance. It's your giving that makes our ministry possible. And our ministry, listen close, it's about finding needs and meeting them, finding problems and solving them, finding hurts and healing them, touching the world one life at a time in concrete ways with the love and power and grace of Almighty God. Would you help us in that ministry by giving generously today? But first, let me pray a prayer of agreement with you. With your gifts or your digital device, your checkbook in your hand, and your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Let's pray together. Almighty God, how we thank you and we praise you for your goodness in our lives. You created us and as we worship you today, we are conscious, oh God, of your protection and your goodness. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for providing for us. We set ourselves in agreement with your promise. We give with the expectation that it will be given to us. We tithe anticipating that the windows of heaven will open for you are our number one priority. So we refuse to treat banks and bills and burdens better than we treat you. We graciously and happily and gratefully and hilariously bring our tithe and bring our offering as a testimony of your goodness. Bless the gift and the giver as we give together in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody who agreed with that prayer said out loud, I agree, hallelujah, amen. Let's give unto the Lord with joy. Come on, we came to bless the Lord. Come on. We come to bless the Lord. We come to take you back. Come on, make some noise. Woo!
I hope that you were blessed by this worship celebration today. It was a blessing for us to have the opportunity to share. I am aware that there are so many worship services online with which you can share, and we are grateful that you chose to stop at our stream. Would you do us a favor? If you have been blessed by this celebration, please leave something in the comments. And then number two, share this stream with somebody else. We're aware that there are a number of you who won't see this worship experience on a Sunday, but you will see it on a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday. Whenever you see it, thank you for being a part of our celebration. Can I encourage you to download the GPS document? It's our message application guide. It'll help you to discuss this word. Die another day, not today with your family and your friends and apply it to your life. Let's receive our benediction. It's printed on the screen. We say it together and we say it out loud. So wherever you are, join us all together. I am because we are. We are because God is. You are not alone. Never, 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 never alone. God is with you and so are we. Listen, we love you and there ain't a thing you can do about it except pray fervently live authentically, love genuinely, and die another day. Today, live. From St. Paul's Baptist Church, here's the scoop. Can you imagine a world where everyone is perfect? We can't either. Life gets messy, feelings get hurt, relationships change, conversations are tough. There's no way around it. So let's learn how to get better at being imperfect together. Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, as he leads us on this journey of discovery, starting February 6th. There's good news for our friendships, marriages, teams, and families this year. No matter what stage or shape your relationships are in, Jesus shows us how to deepen bonds and better love the people around us. 
Join us for the Bridge Bible Study on Thursdays at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. on our mobile app, My SPBC app, and myspbc.tv. We are planning to reopen in-person Sunday school for children and students sometime in the new year. If you are the parent or guardian of a child in our Imagination Life Stage, infant to 10 years of age, and our SMB Life Stage, middle school, high school, and college students, please update your CCB profile and complete a profile update form for your child. Go to myspbc.ccbchurch.com and click on Forms. Scroll until you see the profile forms and complete only the forms that you need. We want to make sure you don't miss any upcoming announcements in the new year. Join us every Wednesday at 714 for prayer together and help us spread the word by sharing the phone number 855-518-2394. Tap pound one to subscribe. If my people who are called by my nature humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Second Chronicles 714. Become who God created you to be. You can face life with the kind of love and support God had in mind for you. Now is the perfect time to find a small group you love that fits your schedule and season in life. Small groups are a place to belong and grow. Find a group you love today by visiting myspbc.info slash find a group. Since 2022, our script program has contributed more than $177,000 toward our emergency assistance program through our community foundation as a result of your participation. To join, download the Raise Right app by scanning the QR code on the bottom right of your screen. Sign up and start purchasing script cards from your favorite retailers. There are no fees, but every time you purchase a script card, retailers contribute to our emergency assistance program to help people in need. Download the Raise Right app today. To purchase cards directly, call 804-463-2466. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. Thank you for watching this service from the St. Paul's Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia. Please look through our website, myspbc.org, to learn more about our church, about our vision, and how you can support our mission to empower people to grow into the persons that God created them to be.